The weak and frail Bolians were infected by a plague that made their skin blister and burst, oozing blood and pus as they collapsed in the streets. And only the brutal warrior race known as humans offered to help. Another two thousand dead just this morning, Saifather said, his scaly head tail drooping with despair as he tossed the mortality report on Darren's cluttered lab desk. And still no response to our distress signal. The human xenobiologist sighed heavily and rubbed his bloodshot eyes. He had been hunched over microscopes and gene sequences for days, desperately searching for a weakness in the alien virus decimating the Bolian population. But he was no closer to a cure than when he started. Darren grabbed his field journal and flipped to his observations on Bolian physiology. Their frail stature and atrophied muscles, evolved in the low gravity of their planet, left them defenseless against disease. And the densely populated cities, built vertical with spindly towers to save space, only hastened the plague's spread. The Council is convening again to discuss final options, Sirefather said as he nervously wrung his webbed hands. I fear they may choose planet-wide quarantine, shutting the spaceports and cutting us off from the galaxy to stop the contagion. Terran's stomach clenched at the thought. If the Bolians isolated, they would be utterly alone against the ravenous pestilence. It would be a death sentence for their entire species. The lab console suddenly chimed with an incoming message from off-world. Sirefather rushed over, his silver eyes widening as he read the communication. By the mother egg, he gasped. We are lost. The other spacefaring races, they have all refused aid. They threaten sanctions against any who help us to protect their own worlds from infection. Darren felt a flash of rage at the alien races, callously abandoning the Bolians to their fate. In the decades since humanity made first contact, they had been treated as primitive, violent savages. The galactic community kept them at arm's length like a dangerous animal. The Quillians, the Zephyrites, the Orax Collective, Sirefather read from the message, each name seeming to deflate him more. None will come. They say our passive nature makes us... expendable. His head tail trembled. We have no allies to turn to. Darren stood and gripped his distraught assistant by his narrow shoulders. He stared into those hopeless silver eyes with fierce determination. I you have humanity, Darren stated with finality, and by God he would find a way to save the Bolians no matter the cost, even if it meant challenging the entire damned galaxy that had spurned them. Because those arrogant alien races were about to learn the true depths of human compassion and the vengeful wrath of human fury. Darren and Sirefather stared at the viewscreen, watching as the battered human freighter punched through Bolia Prime's wispy cloud layer. The ship's hull was pitted with micrometeorite scars and carbon scoring, a testament to its age. It had been over a decade since a human vessel last landed on an alien world. I have to say I'm surprised your people even bothered to come, Sirefather said, looking up at Darren. We've had no direct contact with humans for many cycles. Darren crossed his arms, his jaw tightening. I'm surprised too. When we first made contact fifty years ago, my grandparents' generation was so excited to join the galactic community, but that optimism didn't last. The major spacefaring races made it clear they saw us as primitive brutes, barely civilized, Darren said, an old bitterness creeping into his voice. Our history of war and violence made them think we couldn't be trusted. Any little incident was seen as proof that humans were dangerous savages. Darren thought back to the stories from those early days of integration. Human freighters getting stopped and searched at every spaceport. Terran diplomats excluded from important meetings. Human colonies denied trading rights and representation. Things came to a head when a human ship, the Sparta, defended itself against Zorlian pirates. The Sparta destroyed three pirate frigates. By human standards, it was a clean, justified kill. But the galactic community saw it as a massively disproportionate overreaction. Sirefather nodded slowly. I remember hearing about that incident. It caused quite a stir in the council. For that was the last straw, Darren said. The cultural differences were just too great. 
humanity cut ties and retreated to our own systems to lick our wounds and focus on our own development, we figured if the galaxy wasn't going to accept us, we'd build up our own strength until they couldn't ignore us. The human freighter settled onto the spaceport landing pad with a hiss of hydraulics, kicking up clouds of dust. Darren felt a tightness in his gut. Why would humans come now to help a species they barely knew? It didn't make sense. The freighter's ramp lowered, and a dozen human soldiers marched out. They wore matte black armor, bulky and angular, like pieces of night cut into human shape. Each carried a large plasteel case, easily hefting the awkward weight. Darren sprinted across the landing pad, Sirefather scrambling to keep up. He planted himself in front of the squad leader, an older man with a salt and pepper buzz cut and a face like weathered granite. Well, what the hell is this? Darren demanded. I thought Earth was sending doctors, medical supplies. Who are you people? The squad leader fixed Darren with a look that could melt steel. Son, there'll be time for a full brief later. Right now you need to take us to whoever's in charge and fast. Darren opened his mouth to argue, but Sirefather cut in. This way, please. The council chambers are not far. Sirefather set off at a quick pace, not waiting for Darren's response. The soldiers followed, boots thudding on the metal deck. Their cases rattled and hissed, the sound making Darren's skin crawl. He had no choice but to follow, struggling to master the unease rising in his throat. He prayed to whatever gods were listening that the soldiers' presence didn't mean what he feared. The Bolian council chamber doors swung open, Darren and Sirefather striding in, the human soldiers close on their heels. The dozen councillors, resplendent in their ceremonial silver robes, looked up from their hushed conversations, eyes widening as they took in the sight of the black-armoured Terrans. The squad leader stepped forward, his face a mask of grim determination. I am Colonel Thaddeus Rex of the United Earth Forces. We're here to help, but we don't have much time. Without preamble, he nodded to his men. They heaved the plasteel cases onto the council table, flipping the latches. The councillors leaned forward, curious despite themselves. Rex reached into a case and held up a vial of lurid green liquid, the colour of dying grass. This is an experimental antidote, synthesised from one of the deadliest substances on Earth, King Cobra Venom. The councillors recoiled as if the vial itself were a venomous serpent, ready to strike. Sirefather's head tail twitched nervously. I know how it sounds, Rex continued, his voice hard. But our scientists have found that certain components of the venom, properly modified, show immense promise as a broad-spectrum antiviral agent. Initial trials eliminated plague symptoms in 95% of infected humans, with minimal side effects. Darren felt a chill run down his spine. He knew enough about Bolian physiology to understand that what might be minimal for a human could be catastrophic for the frail aliens. Their bodies simply weren't built to handle such potent foreign substances. The lead counsellor, an elderly Bolian with a head tail gone wispy with age, spoke up. Colonel, while we appreciate your efforts, surely you understand our hesitation. Your trials were conducted on humans, not Bolians. We have no idea how this venom might interact with our biology. Rex leaned forward, placing his hands on the table. Counselors, I understand your caution, but you must also understand that we have no time for excessive prudence. My intel reports that the plague has just reached your planet's breadbasket region. Your food supply is now at risk. Starvation will soon be a far greater threat than any potential side effects. Sirefather made a small choked noise, his silver eyes going wide with horror. Darren felt his own stomach twist into a knot as the magnitude of the crisis truly sank in. The counsellors looked to each other, desperation and indecision written on their faces. Finally, the lead counsellor spoke again, his voice trembling slightly. How... how much of this antidote have you brought, Colonel? Rex's face was stone. We have enough for ten thousand doses. That's less than one percent of your capital city's population, to say nothing of the entire planet. A murmur of dismay rippled through the council. Ten thousand doses. It was a cruel joke in the face of a planetary pandemic. I have orders, Rex continued, 
to administer the antidote to those individuals most crucial for your planet's stability. The Council, of course, essential personnel to keep your infrastructure running, and... He paused, his gaze sweeping the room. 9,800 military-aged males to be selected by this Council, to maintain order and protect vital resources in the days to come. The murmuring exploded into shouting, the councillors leaping to their feet in outrage. Choosing who would live and who would be left to the ravages of the plague, it was an impossible, horrific decision. Rex weathered the storm of protest, his expression unwavering. I understand your anger, but the reality is that we must make hard choices to ensure your species survives. My people will begin synthesizing more of the antidote immediately, but it will take time in the interim. He shrugged, the gesture somehow more chilling than any display of emotion. Sacrifices must be made. As the council devolved into panicked arguments, Darren grabbed Sirefather by the arm, pulling him into a corner. His mind raced, a desperate plan taking shape. Sirefather, listen to me, Darren whispered urgently. I think I know a way we can save everyone, but we have to act fast and we're going to need help from some old friends of mine in this sector, friends who owe me a favor. Sirefather stared at Darren, terror and hope warring in his eyes. What do you need me to do? Darren glanced over at the human soldiers, the green vials glinting mockingly under the council chamber lights. He set his jaw, fierce determination flooding through him. We're going to steal that antidote, and then we're going to make it work for your people, no matter what it takes. He met Sirefather's gaze, his own eyes blazing with promise. We're going to save your world, my friend, even if we have to defy the galaxy to do it. Darren grabbed Sirefather's narrow shoulders, staring intently into his silver eyes. Listen, I have an idea. The antidote is based on cobra venom, right? If we can isolate the medicinal compounds and synthesize them separately from the dangerous components, it could work as a safer cure for bolians. Sirefather's headtail twitched. But how? We'd need the human's research data, a fully equipped lab. So exactly, Darren cut in. And I know where we can get both, the classified bio-labs in the sub-levels. Sirefather blanched. Darren, those are restricted. We can't just... We don't have time to debate with the Council or Colonel Rex, Darren insisted. He nodded towards the councillors, still frantically arguing. They're distracted. Grab an authorizations chip from one of them. It'll get us into the labs. Sirefather swallowed hard but nodded. He sidled over to the councillors, deft fingers swiping a chip from a silver robe. Minutes later they raced through stark underground corridors, boots echoing on metal grating, Sirefather swiped the chip at a reinforced hatch. It hissed open, revealing a cavernous laboratory, all gleaming steel and glass. Gene sequences, mass spectrometers, bioprinters. Darren almost sagged with relief. It was perfect. He immediately began analyzing the antidote's molecular structure, fingers flying over touchscreens and hollow displays. Sirefather took up position at the door, pulse rifle in hand, nervously watching the corridor. Just as Darren isolated a promising compound, alarms shrieked through the complex. Sirefather cursed. They must have discovered the chip is gone. Sirefather's face hardened with resolve. He gave a tight nod and took up position outside the lab door. Muffled shouts and electric blasts soon echoed from the hallway. Darren forced himself to block it out, eyes locked on the achingly slow progress bar. Come on, he breathed. Come on. The printer chimed completion. Darren lunged for the rack of freshly synthesized vials and charged into the corridor. Only to stumble to a horrified halt. Sirefather and a phalanx of guards lay crumpled on the floor, unconscious or worse. A stun grenade clattered to a stop at Darren's feet. He had just enough time to let loose a blistering curse before the world flashed white. Darren's head throbbed as he blinked awake, squinting against the harsh light. He was in a bare holding cell, a thin pallet beneath him and featureless walls closing in. Colonel Rex towered over him, face like granite. Oh, you've got some explaining to do, Rex growled. What the hell were you doing in those restricted labs? Darren struggled to sit up, his skull pounding. 
The antidote, he said, words slurring. I found a way to make it safer for Bolians, extracted the key compound, and synthesized it, Rex cut in. He held up a rack of vials, the liquid inside a vivid blue. My men found these in the printer. Darren's eyes widened. If Rex had the vials, then maybe... I had them analyzed, Rex said as if reading his thoughts. Preliminary tests are promising. Looks like you may have created one hell of a breakthrough. His gaze hardened. And committed about a dozen crimes against the Bolian government in the process. Darren's heart sank. He opened his mouth, but Rex steamrolled on. Conspiring with a council aide to steal classified access, breaking into restricted facilities, unauthorized use of controlled substances and equipment. Rex counted off on his fingers. Any one of those could get you executed under Bolian law. Darren felt like he'd been punched in the gut. He knew the risks, but hearing it laid out so starkly. Or, Rex said, voice shifting, you could share the specs for synthesizing this compound, help my team mass-produce it, do that, and I'll smooth things over with the Bolians. You'll be a hero. Darren stared at him, torn. Sharing the cure could save millions, but giving the human military control over something so potent. A soldier burst into the cell, face pale. He whispered urgently to Rex, whose eyes went wide. What is it? Darren demanded, fear coiling in his stomach. Rex turned back to him, expression grim. The plague, it's mutated. Spreading faster than ever, with an 85% kill rate, Bolian command estimates total societal collapse within days. Darren felt like the floor had dropped out from under him. 85% collapse. It was a nightmare. Darren's mind raced. The human soldiers had been planet-side for hours exposed. If Rex's original antidote didn't work... Are you willing to bet your men's lives? Darren asked hoarsely. On that cobra juice you brought? Rex stiffened. He glanced at the soldier who looked terrified beneath his helm. Darren forged ahead. Let me combine my research with yours. We can create a new broad-spectrum cure, get it to everyone. Worry about the politics later. And how do I know you won't betray us? Rex challenged. Feed us false data. Darren met his gaze unflinchingly. If I was going to screw you over, I wouldn't have warned you about the exposure risk. Silence stretched, taut as a wire. Rex stared at Darren, searching his face. The soldier fidgeted, watching them both. Finally, Rex spoke into his comm. This is Colonel Rex. I want every vial of antidote moved to Lab 1, along with all research data, and get the council on the line. He looked back at Darren, something like respect in his eyes. You've got one chance, Xavier. Make it count. Darren nodded as the cell door opened, a fierce light kindling in his chest. It was time to save a world, and maybe build a bridge between two. Darren hunched over a console, fingers flying as he cross-referenced the human and Bolian genome scans. The lab buzzed with controlled chaos, scientists from both species shouting across the room, rapidly exchanging data pads and sample vials. Colonel Rex stood at the center of it all, barking orders and fielding increasingly frantic comms from the council. Sire Father, a bandage wrapped around his headtail, worked feverishly to bridge the language barrier. He dashed between workstations, his translator module working overtime as he conveyed complex biological concepts from one team to the other. The sulfur-based proteins in the Bolian cell membranes are rejecting the antidote, a human biologist called out her face lined with fatigue. We need to find a compatible delivery vector. Sire Father rushed to relay the message, his voice strained. The Bolian scientist he spoke to shook her head, silver eyes wide with despair. Darren gritted his teeth, trying to block out the rising tide of panic. They were so close, but every simulation ended in failure. The differences between their species were just too... He froze, a sudden realization crashing over him like a wave. They'd been going about this all wrong, focusing on the disparities in their biology. But what about the similarities, the fundamental building blocks shared by all carbon-based life? Heart-pounding, Darren called up a new simulation. He stripped away the species-specific complexities, reducing the model to a bare-bones cellular framework. With trembling fingers, 
he introduced a simplified version of the antidote, held his breath. The holographic cells pulsed green, absorbing the compound. It was crude, inelegant, but it worked. I've got something, Darren yelled, his voice cracking. The room fell silent for a split second before erupting into a frenzy of activity. Scientists crowded around his workstation, shouting questions and suggestions. They worked at a breakneck pace, synthesizing physical samples of the simplified cure. The bioprinters hummed and whirred, churning out batch after batch for testing. Just as the first results started coming back positive, the lab doors burst open. A soldier stumbled in, his armor scuffed and splattered. Sir, he saluted Rex hastily, we've got a situation. The lower levels have been breached, Bolian civilians, they're demanding the cure. Rex cursed under his breath. How the hell did they get in? The soldier swallowed hard. They're saying, they're saying they'll tear this place apart if they have to, that they've got nothing left to lose. Sire Father turned to Darren, his face ashen. If they find out we only have a few thousand doses of the original antidote. It'll be a bloodbath, Rex finished grimly. We need to get this new cure ready to distribute, and fast. I can modify the molecular structure, he said quickly. Make it airborne like a gas. We can vent it through the complex's life support system. If my calculations are right, it should spread through the entire city. Rex looked at him sharply. And what's to stop the Bolians from thinking it's another plague, that we're trying to poison them? Darren met his gaze, a bitter smile tugging at his lips. We go first, the humans. We breathe it in before anyone else. The soldier stiffened. Sir, with all due respect. Do it, Rex cut him off. Get the men in position to barricade the lab but leave the vents open. As the soldier rushed to comply, Sirefather grabbed Darren's arm. Are you certain about this? If it doesn't work, then we're all dead anyway, Darren said hollowly. He turned back to the console, fingers flying over the keys as he worked to aerosolize the antidote. The bioprinters whined in protest, pushed to their limits. Darren watched the progress bar inch forward, his heart in his throat. From beyond the sealed doors, the muted roar of the desperate crowd grew louder. Darren looked around the lab, taking in the haggard faces of the human and Bolian scientists, Rex and his soldiers, weapons drawn but not raised, Sire Father, his silver eyes glinting with fear and determination. The air vents hissed open. A shimmering blue mist began to pour out, spreading through the lab like a ghostly tide. Darren closed his eyes and inhaled deeply, the gas cold and stinging in his lungs. For a heartbeat that seemed to last an eternity, no one moved, no one breathed. Then Rex squared his shoulders, holstered his sidearm, and strode towards the doors. At his signal, the soldiers heaved the barricades aside. As the doors slid open, the Bolian mob surged forward, only to stumble to a halt, confusion and fear warring on their faces at the sight of the gas swirling around the unmasked humans. People of Bolia Prime, he called out, we have the cure and we will share it with all of you. A child near the front of the crowd, her scales dull with sickness, took a tentative step forward. She reached out, her small hand passing through the blue mist. Darren's hand shook as he lowered the radio from his ear. Colonel Rex's words echoed in his mind. The freighter was ready, the cure primed for release. All they needed now was to get the Bolians outside and breathing. He locked eyes with Sire Father, the two scientists sharing a moment of grim understanding. They had to move and fast. Sire Father snatched up a case of the aerosolized cure and sprinted for the door, Darren hot on his heels. They raced through the complex's twisting corridors, the distant roar of the panicked mob growing louder with each pounding step. Sire Father leaped atop a table and waved his arms frantically, his reedy voice straining to be heard over the tumult. Please listen, he cried. A cure is coming, but we need more time. You must remain calm. The mob quieted for a moment, suspicious murmurs rippling through the crowd. A few faces turned towards Sire Father, eyes narrowed. Why should we believe you? A Bolian man shouted, his head tail lashing. The plague is at our doors. Our children are dying. The crowd surged forward, 
the barricades groaning under the pressure. The guards tightened their grips on their rifles. Darren's heart raced. They were losing control. He keyed his radio, words spilling out in a rush. Rex, are you in position? We need that dispersal now. Affirmative, the colonel's gruff voice crackled back. But you've got to get them outside and breathing it in. We only have one shot at this. He knew what he had to do. Darren vaulted over the barricade, ignoring Sirefather's startled shout. He pushed through the churning sea of bodies until he reached the window. With a grunt, he threw it open, the sudden rush of air silencing the crowd. Sounds of chaos drifted up from the streets below, screams breaking glass, the wail of sirens. The Bolians were rioting, tearing their own city apart in their terrified frenzy. Darren sucked in a deep breath of the cool, clear air. He turned to face the mob, their silver eyes reflecting the pulsing emergency lights. "'People of Bolia Prime!' Darren roared, his voice raw with emotion. "'The humans have brought a cure, but you must trust us!' A ripple of unease passed through the crowd. Trust the humans, the violent, uncouth barbarians, it was unthinkable. Darren held up a hand, forestalling their protests. "'I will prove it's safe,' he declared. "'Right here, right now, on live video for all to see.' With that... He nodded sharply to Rex over the radio. On cue, a deep thrumming filled the air as the human freighter rose into view outside the window. The crowd shrank back, some crying out in alarm. But Darren stood firm, his back to the window as he faced the cameras. He felt the first wisps of mist caress his skin, saw the shimmering plumes begin to descend over the city like an otherworldly fog. The Bolians watched in fearful silence as Darren inhaled deeply, pulling the foreign substance into his lungs. He coughed once, twice, his chest burning. And then nothing. No convulsions, no agonized screams. Darren remained standing, a slow smile spreading across his face as he realized they had done it. The cure worked. For a long, breathless moment, no one moved. Then, tentatively, a single Bolian stepped forward, then another. One by one they approached the window, faces upturned to the sky as they breathed in the healing mist. Sirefather watched, hardly daring to hope, as the Bolians in the council chambers inhaled the cure with no ill effects. A, a cheer began to build, soft at first, then rising to a thunderous crescendo. In the streets below the news spread like wildfire. Footage of Darren's leap of faith played on every public screen as the rioting crowds slowed, then stopped staring up in wonder at the glittering mist blanketing their city. Hesitantly, reverently, they emerged from homes and shelters, the able supporting the sick as they stepped out into the healing fog. Faces filled with relief and joy turned skyward, welcoming salvation. Back in the council chambers, Darren and Sirefather sank to the floor, their bodies trembling with exhaustion and release. They had done the impossible, bridged the gap between two species to save a world. But even as elation surged through him, Darren knew their work was far from over. The cure still needed to be dispersed globally, the plague's devastation rebuilt from, and the rift between humanity and the galactic community would not mend overnight. It would be a long, hard road. But for now, for this one shining moment, Darren let himself bask in the knowledge that when faced with destruction, human compassion, and human determination. As the healing mist blanketed the city, the Bolians poured out of homes and buildings into the streets. The once desolate, plague-ravaged avenues transformed into a cacophony of celebration. Impromptu parades snaked through the boulevards, throngs of Bolians cheering and dancing, their scales gleaming with renewed vitality. Overjoyed citizens embraced each other, laughing through tears of relief. Families reunited, hugging fiercely, as if they'd never let go again. Spontaneous festivals erupted in every square and park, with food and drink materialising as if by magic. Music filled the air, a joyous symphony of life triumphing over death. The human soldiers, so grim and foreboding mere hours ago, now found themselves swept up in the jubilant atmosphere. Bolians rushed to them, clasping their hands, kissing their cheeks, hoisting them onto shoulders in impromptu parades. The once tense warriors now grinned and laughed, caught off guard by the outpouring of gratitude. 
Colonel Rex watched the scene unfold, shaking his head with a bemused expression. A Bolian child darted up and hugged his leg before scampering off, giggling. This isn't exactly what I expected when I signed up for this mission, Rex remarked to Darren, who stood beside him. As the festivities continued, reports flooded in from across the planet. The cure was working everywhere without fail. In city after city, town after town, the story was the same. The sick were healed, the dying reborn. Miraculously, there were no reports of adverse effects or negative interactions with Bolian physiology. Sirefather pushed his way through the crowd to Darren, his silver eyes shining. The council just convened an emergency session, he said breathlessly. They voted unanimously to award you and the human team our highest honors for your role in saving our people. Darren opened his mouth to respond, but was cut off by a shout. An ashen-faced Bolian aide pushed through the throng, rushing to Colonel Rex. He thrust a datapad into the colonel's hands, speaking rapidly in hushed tones. Rex's brow furrowed as he read the screen. His face paled. He looked up, catching Darren's eye, and gestured for him to follow. The two men pushed their way out of the crowd and into a makeshift command center the humans had set up. Rex strode to the main console and brought up a garbled transmission. The signal was distorted, static, crackling through the audio, but certain words cut through the white noise like a knife. Quarantine, a blockade, you total containment. As the transmission sputtered out, Rex turned to Darren, his expression grim. In all the chaos, we forgot one crucial thing he said heavily. We never communicated the existence of the aerosolized cure to the rest of the fleet or the interstellar community at large. A sinking feeling settled in Darren's gut as the implications sank in. As far as the other worlds are concerned, Rex continued, Bolia Prime just deliberately released an unknown biological agent into its atmosphere, one that could already be spreading beyond the planet. He gestured to the now dark screen. That was the fleet admiral. He's informed me a full armada is en route to lock down the planet to prevent any risk of what they think is a bioweapon escaping. Darren's blood ran cold. When? he asked, though he feared he already knew the answer. Darren stared out the command center window at the celebrating Bolians, their joy now feeling like a fragile, fleeting thing in the face of this new crisis. They had cured a plague, only to now face the threat of interstellar war. The universe, it seemed, was not yet done testing them. But Darren squared his shoulders, a fierce resolve settling over him. They would find a way through this, as they had everything else. Humanity and Bolians united. For they had tasted salvation, and he would not see it ripped away, not without a fight. Darren pounded his fist on the console, frustration boiling over as another transmission failed to connect. The viewscreen flashed an angry red, mocking their efforts. Colonel Rex leaned over his shoulder, his jaw set. God damn it, Rex growled. The Admiral's put the whole fleet on a complete comms blackout. He's not taking any chances. Darren raked a hand through his hair, mind racing. They had to get through to the Admiral, had to make him see reason before he did something irreversible. But how? Sire father burst into the command center his silver eyes wide. I've got the maglev prepped and ready. It can have us at the long-range array in under an hour. Darren's head snapped up, the long-range array. If they could just reach its control center, maybe they could boost a signal strong enough to punch through the interference, talk some sense into the Admiral. They sprinted through the corridors, a strange trio, the human scientist, the alien bureaucrat, and the grizzled soldier. Shouts and pounding feet echoed behind them, as Rex barked orders to his men. As they neared the Maglev platform, a Bolian soldier skidded to a halt in front of them, his face ashen. Sirs, we've got incoming. A human fighter wing descending fast, they're headed straight for the city center. Darren's stomach dropped. If those fighters opened fire... Rex grabbed the soldier's shoulder. Establish a defensive perimeter. But do not, I repeat, do not engage unless absolutely necessary. We're not fighting our own if we can help it. The soldier nodded, then sprinted off, shouting into his comm. Darren, Sire, Father and Rex leaped into the waiting maglev car. 
As the doors hissed shut and the train jolted into motion, Darren braced himself against the wall, his heart hammering. The cityscape blurred past the windows, transforming into a smear of colour as the maglev accelerated to breakneck speeds. Sirefather hunched over a console, his fingers flying as he worked to establish an uplink with the array. Darren paced the length of the car, his mind churning. Even if they reached the array, even if they got a signal through, there was no guarantee the Admiral would listen. The man was a hard-ass, a by-the-book militant who shot first and asked questions later. Sirefather looked up from the console, his expression pinched. I can slave the array to broadcast on all frequencies, put out a wide-beam data burst. If we send the raw scientific models, the simulations, the proof that the cure is safe. He'll shoot it down, Darren cut in, shaking his head. In the heat of the moment with the fleet on high alert, cold data won't cut it. We need something more immediate, more visceral, something to make them pause long enough to actually listen. Silence fell broken only by the hum of the maglev. Darren stared out the window, watching the Bolian landscape streak by, rolling hills, crystal blue lakes, soaring mesas, all of it in jeopardy because of one admiral's paranoia. And then it hit him, a crazy, desperate, brilliant idea. He whirled to face Sirefather, his expression grim. I know what we have to do, but you're not going to like it. Sirefather tilted his head, Wariness and curiosity warring in his eyes. What is it? Darren took a deep breath. We need to broadcast you live to the entire fleet. Show them a cured bolian, healthy and whole. You breathe in the aerosolized cure, right on camera. Sire Father's eyes widened. But the cure, we don't know if... I know, Darren said softly. It's a risk, a big one. But if we can't convince the Admiral to stand down, this might be the only way to make him hesitate to prove to him, beyond a shadow of a doubt, that we're telling the truth. Sirefather was silent for a long moment, his gaze distant. Then slowly he nodded. I understand, he said, his voice quiet but firm. I'm ready to do whatever it takes for my people. He reached out, clasping Darren's shoulder. You're a true friend to us, Darren Xavier, no matter what happens. Remember that. Darren swallowed hard a lump in his throat. He opened his mouth to respond, but the words wouldn't come. The maglev shrieked into the station, the sudden deceleration slamming them against the walls. The doors hissed open, and Darren and Sirefather leaped out, a strange, urgent energy crackling between them. In the distance, the silhouettes of human dropships grew larger against the sky like birds of prey descending on the hapless city. They were out of time. Sirefather's fingers flew across the control panel, rapidly configuring the array to broadcast on all frequencies. Darren hunched over a console beside him, splicing data packets and video feeds with a manic intensity. Sweat beaded on his brow as he worked to compress the files, knowing every second counted. Almost there, Sirefather muttered, his voice tight with tension. Just need to calibrate the signal booster. The array hummed to life, a deep vibration that Darren could feel in his bones. Lights flickered across the towering panels, a rainbow of activity. Darren straightened, meeting Sirefather's eyes. He gave a solemn nod. It was time. Sirefather took a deep, shuddering breath. Then, with a final keystroke, he opened the transmission channel. People of the United Earth Forces, Sirefather began, his voice echoing through the control room. I am Sirefather of the Bolian Council. I come to you with a message of truth and of hope. As Sirefather launched into his impassioned retelling of the past harrowing days, Darren watched the array's output monitors. The signal was strong and clear, punching through the layers of interference. Every ship in the human fleet would be seeing and hearing this. Sirefather's voice rose and fell with the cadence of his story, painting a vivid picture of desperation ingenuity and unlikely alliance. He spoke of Darren's tireless efforts to bridge the gap between their species, of Colonel Rex's bravery in the face of an unknowable threat, of the indomitable human spirit that had saved a world. But as Sirefather neared the climax of his tale, his words began to slur. He gripped the edge of the console, his knuckles white. 
Despite the adversity, Sirefather pushed on, his breath coming shorter now. Despite the suspicion and fear, the humans never wavered. They... He swayed on his feet. Darren stepped forward in alarm, but Sirefather waved him off. They were our salvation, Sirefather rasped out. Our... our... His legs buckled. He looked to Darren, a universe of emotions swirling in his silver eyes. Fear, resolve, apology, defiance. Darren rushed to him, skidding to his knees. His heart seized as he saw the telltale lesions blooming across Sirefather's scales, the mottled red of inflamed flesh. The plague. But how? Jal Tara, Darren breathed, the pieces clicking into place with sickening clarity. It must have been a code phrase, a trigger for a dormant sample of the original, uncured contagion. Sirefather had infected himself, kept the disease at bay until the crucial moment. A final devastating proof for the watchful fleet above, a sacrifice for peace. Sirefather spasmed, a choked cry tearing from his throat. Coloured foam flecked his lips as his eyes rolled back. Darren gripped Sirefather's shoulders, barely noticing the sting of tears on his cheeks. He looked up, staring directly into the broadcasting camera. This is not a trick, Darren said, his voice shaking. Sirefather was infected with the original plague, the one that killed millions. But we have the cure, we have always had the cure, and now... Darren fumbled in his pack, fingers closing around the cool metal of the hypospray. He slotted a vial of shimmering blue liquid into the chamber. He pressed the hypospray to Sirefather's neck, just above his throbbing pulse point. The device hissed as it injected the aerosolized antidote. For a moment nothing happened. Sirefather lay still, his breath coming in shallow, rattling gasps. Darren's heart pounded in his ears, drowning out all other sound. Then slowly, impossibly, the lesions began to recede. The angry red faded to a dull pink, then disappeared entirely. Sirefather's breathing eased, the horrible rattle quieting. His eyes fluttered open, unfocused, but alive. He was alive. This is Admiral Teague of the UEF Indomitable. A heavy pause. We... I have seen enough. The blockade will be lifted. Our sincerest apologies for the misunderstanding. The transmission cut off. Darren slumped back, his entire body going slack with relief. They had done it. Against all odds, they had convinced the fleet. He reached out, clasping Sirefather's hand. The Bolian's grip was weak, but it was there. They had won the day. But as Darren helped Sirefather to his feet, a sense of unease crept in. The revelations, the unilateral actions, the shadow of the plague, it had shaken something fundamental. He could see it in the new wariness in Sirefather's eyes, the set of his shoulders. Trust, once fractured, was not easily mended. And Darren couldn't help but wonder if, in his desperate scramble to save lives, he had jeopardized something just as precious, the fragile understanding between their peoples. The return to the city was somber. The once jubilant crowds had dispersed, a miasma of confusion and anxiety hanging in the air. News of the human ships of the tense standoff, had spread. Colonel Rex greeted them at the landing pad, his face lined with exhaustion. He clasped Darren's shoulder, offering a tight smile. How you did good, Xavier, damned good. But, he glanced at Sirefather, at the Bolian guards eyeing the human soldiers warily. This whole thing, it's going to have repercussions, the kind of repercussions that don't just go away. Darren's throat tightened, he knew Rex was right. In the heat of the crisis, he had acted on instinct, on desperation, and it had worked. But at what cost? As he packed his few belongings, preparing for the long journey back to Earth, Sirefather appeared at his door. The Bolian looked tired, diminished in a way that went beyond the physical. I wanted to thank you, Sirefather said softly, for everything. You, you saved us, saved me. Darren's chest ached. I would do it again in a heartbeat. Sirefather smiled, but it didn't quite reach his eyes. I know that's what makes you at you. He took a deep breath. But Darren, what happened? It can't be undone. The doubts, the fears, they linger. Darren nodded, a lump in his throat. I know, I'm sorry, I never meant... I know, 
Sire Father cut in gently. You did what you had to do, what you thought was right and it was, but... He trailed off, looking out the window at the city skyline. The path forward, it's uncertain now, for all of us. Darren followed his gaze, taking in the soaring spires, the glittering domes, a world saved but forever changed. With a final clasp of hands, a final exchange of looks heavy with unspoken words, Darren boarded the human ship. As it lifted off, he watched Bolia Prime recede through the view screen. They had achieved the impossible. They had forged an alliance, however brief, and snatched life from the jaws of death. But as the stars blurred into the familiar swirl of hyperspace, Darren couldn't shake the feeling that, in the process, they had lost something just as vital, and he didn't know if they would ever get it back. You have reached the end of the story. If you enjoyed this story and want to support us, please leave a like and subscribe to our channel, and for every comment that says 88, I will heart every single one of them. Thank you for your time.